Hello everyone, welcome back. You came back. Oh, I'm always so excited that you came back. There has been one of those brief controversies swirling around the writer's community on the social media. It's one of those that generates a great deal of controversy at the time, and it'll probably be completely forgotten by the time I put up this video. But even so, I thought it was an interesting thing to address, so here we are. Here are the facts. Someone made a post stating not write what you know, which is typical, but write who you are. And they went on to admonish anyone not doing that as being untruthful. Predictably, this did not go down real well. I think the original poster actually meant when writing nonfiction, but they didn't clearly state that. So because of that, the post generated many replies showing confusion and annoyance. For example, someone said this would be a little awkward because they write about serial killers. Now, when writing nonfiction, that advice seems to be helpful. When writing fiction, that advice seems less so. Or does it? I mean, well, that's the topic of the video, that's what I'm here to dissect, so let's find out. It is much the same as writing what you know. And writing what you know doesn't always seem like the most helpful advice. And my life is not that exciting. Like, I go to the office, I come home, I make my lunch, I eat my lunch, I do the dishes, I go to school functions, it's not that interesting. As for stuff I know instead of do, there's only so much of that, and I for one feel very much like I'm a jack-of-all-trades master of none. So I don't feel qualified to expound advice on really any given topic. And yes, I know I have a YouTube channel with writing advice, but I feel more like I'm introducing topics for discussion rather than being a sage upon the mount. So you write stuff you're not familiar with in order to write something interesting. And you have more than one character, and they're all necessarily different. So you're writing what you don't know, and you're writing who you definitely are not. Okay, this is something I've noticed in my own writing. My writing tends to incorporate a lot of conversations between characters, which, you know, is understandable. I write stage plays. <laughs> it's kind of a major part of it. But that might also explain why I write scripts as opposed to a more traditional novel-type narrative structure. And if I do write in that novel, short story type narrative structure, I tend to write in the first person. This is a narrative structure that scripts tend to use, that sort of first person, I'm talking to the audience and including the audience sort of address. It's not a third person omniscient where the narrator is removed from the action. No, in mine, the narrator is talking directly to the audience. And while they don't necessarily expect a response, they're including the audience, so it's an interaction. It's kind of what I'm doing here right now. Does this mean I like to talk to people? Heck no. <laughs> no. But I am very interested in what they have to say nonetheless. I like to try to figure out people's thought processes and not just because it's helpful to my writing, which it, it really, really is, but also because my social integration process has, throughout my entire life, been different from that of a lot of other people's, or at least it seems so to me. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to understand their thought process and how they seem to get regular social things conventions and such like that, I just, it's taken me a lot longer. And that's one reason I'm addressing things on this channel that may seem obvious to other people. Like, last week I did different kinds of non-romantic love. I just find this stuff interesting. So let's say my characters are the talkative sort. I myself am hardly the talkative sort. But even so, 
this can reflect something about myself and my nature. The more I look at it, the more I'm noticing how a character that even one that I think might be the complete opposite of me can show my character. Like for example, a character who is into a fandom or something, they're a complete nut about it, sports or entertainment, whatever. They're completely into this thing, they buy all the merchandise, they know all the facts, etc. I know and care nothing about that particular fandom. But I do have things that I get into and I can get really deeply into them so I know what that is to discover something to be like, hey, this is really interesting and then want to know all the things about it. Much like life, we're looking at differences more than similarities, but when you start looking at the similarities, you realize just how darn many of them there are. And I have realized this recently when I've been watching more foreign films. Our cultural differences are like the overlay, they're like the veneer on top of everything. They inform the way people see the world, but there are also ways that people interact with the world that make them just plain human. After all, most of us have the same basic form, and there are only so many ways you can move that form, and we all have basic necessities that need to be met. So it stands to reason that we would address meeting those necessities in the same basic way. Those are the most basic of basic things. Past that, we are interacting with each other and our environments on the daily. We have different social conventions, but the underlying ideas behind those social conventions are the same. Example, when you meet someone, uh, the Japanese, right, they typically bow when meeting someone. Here in America, we don't tend to do that. We shake hands, we give a little awkward wave, we go, hey some other type of greeting. But it's still a form of greeting. It's an acknowledgement of the other person and an implication that you are both going to abide by these social conventions, which informs your interactions moving forward. Everybody has some form of that. It's a basic human thing. It is the same way with your characters. Even if you're not writing a human, there will be something about them that is a human characteristic. And that's because you are writing them and you are human. Your experience in being human informs the way you write. You can write a character who's a wolf and you can know all the facts on wolves. You can have done all your research on wolves and you can use your imagination to try and help you think the way a wolf would think. But at the end of the day, you are not a wolf. You are a human. And at some point, the wolf is going to react to something in a way that's a little more human. It's going to have a thought about something that's a little more human. It won't be able to help it. It's just the way it comes across. Your experience in being human informs the way you write. Even if you have a character who's not human, let's say you are writing a wolf, and you have done all the research on wolves, you know tons of facts on wolves, you're using your imagination to help you think what it's like to be a wolf. But at the end of the day, you are not a wolf. And your experience is going to come across. And at some point, the wolf is going to have a thought that seems a little more human. They're going to react to something in a slightly more human way. There's going to be something. Mark my words. So no matter what you're writing, even if, yes, even if it's a serial killer or something like that, there will be something about that character that will be informed by you and your experience. So no matter what you're writing, even if, yes, it's a serial killer or something like that, there will be something about that, some characteristic, some sequence of events in that story sparked off by them. There will be something in there that is you. Maybe your killer owns an iguana. Maybe you own an iguana. Maybe you know someone who owns an iguana. Maybe you just saw a movie about iguanas Maybe you thought, oh, that'd just be some weird random quirk for this character. But even so, you thought of it, and you put it in the story. Just by virtue of being your story, you are putting yourself into it. It can't be avoided. I've touched on different writing styles in other videos, and this is pretty much that. 
only you can write your story. If you take any story and you have it written by another author, it will come out completely differently. Your stories are you, and you can only distance yourself so much. I could go on and on, me, the not talker, but I will stop here. So tell me, in your writing, what stands out to you as something that is very definitely you? What is something that you see emerging as a common theme throughout your assortment of work? And if you look at it again with an objective eye, what's something that you see that is you that you didn't notice before? This also applies to reading. Readers, what kind of books do you like to read? And why do you think that is? So many questions. I love it. Life is questions. I hope you keep asking all the questions and writing and reading all the things. And I will see you next week. Bye. Hey, hey, hey. Come here. Come here. Come here. It's okay. It's okay. They're just people walking. It's okay. It's allowed. They're allowed to walk. Let them walk. I don't see anybody else to walk. I don't. No. no. It's all good. It's all good. It's okay. Yeah, was there a goose or something? Yeah, they happen. He's happy. Yeah. Okay. Go lay down. No, was that not there? I don't know. Okay, as long as you're quiet. It's not a third-person omniscient where the narrator, 